did everyone enjoy watching Pino's last game? We didn't. (laughs) (laughs) We had a wild day. You know when the unexpected happens and you just completely lose power? We go to sit down. It's coincidentally also my birthday. (laughs) On the 24th, we sit down. We've made ourselves a meal because we're going to do this. It was going to be a little birthday thing. My birthday. A little party, a little celebration. While we watch the game, we make our food. We literally go to sit down. And the power goes out. And not only does the power go out, the power goes out for, for a very long time. So too long. So our power went out. We we could kind of catch the games. Our our LTE worked a little bit on our phone, not very well. So we kind of saw some of the game, Pino's last game on the twenty fourth. Yeah. But not great. We just rewatched it tonight. Uh, but that's what we're going to talk about. Also, we're going to talk a little bit about the game, but also we're going to talk a little bit about the Julie Ertz's last game because I mean. Don't, you know, as much as they were friendlies and, you know, they were competitive, you know, that's really what it was focusing on is that Julie's last game, Pino's last last national team game. Sad stuff. So, yeah. So how's it going, everyone? How, did anyone else's power go out on <laughs> over the weekend? And yeah, usually, you know, Sarah, usually I have notes. Usually I have articles up to we're going to read. I have nothing. And it's just going to be an emotional goodbye. Yeah. To so- <laughs> two very iconic players. I know. <laughs> and that's thing, you know, on the 21st, Julie Ertz's last game with uh, the national team or at all. It's her retirement, completely retiring, done with league, done with women's national team. And it was very emotional. She was very emotional. It was very emotional to watch. Um, even those who don't have emotions had emotions that yeah, night. Yeah, they really did. Brought out the emotions in me, that's for sure. The fact that she was even playing that game at all, the fact that she came back for the World Cup, I think most of us were even stunned that she did decide to come back um, to play national team because she would, you know, she had taken a lot of time after having her son. And but she, she knew she could help the team. And you know what? She could help the team because she's a once in a generation type of player. And, you know, although the World Cup didn't go as like planned. any as planned, she really did. I don't think Vladko utilized her as well as he could have, but she definitely was a positive to the team, you know? So the fact that she was even playing at the World Cup and we were able to have... Hello, everyone. This is a little bit strange, but we are actually recording this again because our audio... Something weird is going on, sir, because first our power goes out for the game and then this video doesn't record properly. There's a force working against us. Yes, <laughs> something. Some sort of surge. Not a love surge. No, not a love surge. Um, so we recorded a video and for some reason, half of what we talked about did not record. It started about at the very end when we were talking about Pino's game. And so what we're going to do now, we're just going to recap what we said. This, this video is a hot mess. So if anyone actually makes it through this video, <laughs> what we were talking about there is that Julie Ertz, to, actually that Julie Ertz was able to come back and have a send off game when I think a lot of people didn't even think she was going to come back at all after having yeah. her son. Yeah. So it was great to, that she got to have it in her moment and what she's meant to the team. I mean, she has, you Legend, know, icon. Yeah. I totally mean, emotional. No one will replace her shoes. You can't, but hopefully people will learn and have learned from her and just continue to make the team what she made it, you know, for all those years. She ends on 123 caps. And I think I saw a statistic. I'm I don't even know, but the amount of games that they lost while she started was like, 2% 2% something like that some crazy statistic yeah, like that pretty good um so it was you know very emotional you know, I'm not even sure what we said in the first version of this video but basically she's a legend and it's sad but happy for her that she'll be able to that she's able to leave on her own terms that she's ready right now yeah yeah and she's gonna focus on you know being a mom and stuff like that which is cool yeah but I mean we're really gonna miss her you know, so, on yeah. the field. She started this game, it, you know, it was USA versus South Africa. And she started, I think most people wanted to see a goal from her. Of course. And, and when she played, you know, they kept feeding her the ball. There was a couple, re- there was like three really close chances uh, I yes, think she had. I know. Uh, that would have been so iconic. Yes, that would have been great if we would have seen that. But so they went up against South Africa. But South Africa, as we remember from the World Cup, is a strong team. Uh, they weren't full strength. They weren't fully healthy. And obviously, it's a home American game. So the, the advantage is for the, the U.S. team. But it wasn't a fully strong South Africa team. But, you know, I, I thought the U.S. looked really good. I mean, they kept talking about them having a sense of freedom. They could play how they wanted to play a little bit more. Yeah. Um, then with Vladko's strange uh, <laughs> guidance. <laughs> I, like, I liked Vladko, but I don't think he was... 
I just no no one had confidence when he was coaching. I don't think so. I even think the players didn't. It seemed like they seemed confused half the time. Sorry, Vlad. Go. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, even in this game, I mean, um, in the thirty second minute, when Williams scored. Uh, and then two minutes later, Trinity Rodman scored in the 34th minute. A few minutes later, uh, uh, Lynn Williams scored again. So they scored yeah. all three of their points. It ended up 3-0 in the 32nd in the 41st minute of the game. And that was it. And I thought they played really well, you know? Yeah, it was exciting to see them, you know, go out there, have fun, look like they're having fun and just win. I mean, yeah. It's like the good old days, you know? It almost seemed like there wasn't any pressure, too. It's like, yeah, yeah. it like the pressure was almost like we think you're going to win, but even if you don't, obviously you want to win for Julie's last game, but mm-hmm. it's kind of like they look like they were kind of having fun out there. But in the 36th minute, that's Julie's last last hurrah because she was uh, she subbed out for Andy Sullivan, and that was it. But, you know, huge ovation. She was emotional. Everyone was emotional. And uh, that was it in the 36th minute. So end of a, an amazing career. You know, sky's the limit for her after, you know, after playing, though. She could probably do anything she wants to do. Yeah, she's Julie freaking Hurts. Yeah, and um, starting the women win, you know, 3-0. Lynn looked great. Trinity had a goal. She, we'll talk about it in a second. But Trin also scored in the second game. So it was great to see them play well. Uh, but very cool. They interviewed Julie after the, the match and basically said, uh, you know, Julie Foudy was trying to say, hey, the Olympics are just, you know, 10 months away. But Julie Hurts was like, nope, you know, I'm ready. Hey, you never know. She could come back. <laughs> some, some, some people, people do. Yeah, some people actually think she might. We've we've heard a couple of people saying we think she might. But I think she seems like she's pretty much yeah. um, retired. But that was cool. Um, so when we talked about that in our video, we got somehow deleted. Uh, we talked about that. Then we also went on to the Megan, the 20 game on the 24th, um, because that was Megan Rapinoe's last game. I mean, she ends with 203 caps along. She is the face of the team. I mean, yeah, her and Alex Morgan kind of are the face of the team, but she represents so much she, what she meant to specifically LGBT the community and coming out and when she I think in 2011 it just asked her she's like yeah she's like, I'm gay you know it, it was like a no deep no big deal deep big deal kind of thing and you know people had led her before her who had you know were LGBT to, for her to have that moment in 2011 to say that and it just started a whole like yeah ripple effect I think even a lot of people who come out as LGBTQ plus kind of cite Megan Rapino saying you know I saw Megan Rapino do it and it was a trailblazer for that. I mean, not she was not alone, but she was one of the loudest people in the movement. But her match, her fi- send off uh, match, was the September twenty fourth, and very emotional too. You know, I, the the video that got deleted. I kept saying in the video, you know, M- Megan almost had this like glazed look on her face. A lot of it, she almost looked like she was in like I don't want to say shock that it was her last game, but almost like a glaze. Like I can't believe I'm here. Look, like yeah. she was so. She's trying to keep yeah. her emotions together. You yeah, because it's an emotional thing. Yeah, her very last game with the you know with the national team. Right wild and she played she started and um her whole family was there and very emotional sue bird was there and apparently i just read this that sue bird's nieces were the some of the ball girls for the uh oh, for the so game cute. and that cute also like julie Ertz, she was very um wanting to get that goal on her last on her last appearance and it was very close there was two like free kicks that were very 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 close yeah that would have been i mean the, the whole crowd would have gone wild i know um for if she would have made a goal. But, you know, also, you know, we talk about what she did for off the field. But on the field, I mean, icon. I mean, what she's done, you know, 2018 was her year. That We should just call it really that was. the Megan Rapino year of the world. <laughs> Best year ever. <laughs> yeah, 2018. And everyone remembers, to, you know, even like the 2011 World Cup. Everyone talks about that moment when she, you know, basically the World Cup's over for them until the last, 10 seconds of the match and that went wild but 2019 i think everyone would you know that was her year the you know between donald trump winning the world cup the ball indoor she was on top of the world and that was very cool to see and also she she made comments like you know this obviously the world cup did not go the way you know as planned did not go well but she said that's she actually kind of likes that story. She likes that being her story. You know, not all stories and fairy tales, you know, they end in reality sometimes that very true. You're on top of the world and then you you missed your final World Cup PK and that's the way it kind of ends, but it doesn't negate all the other amazing things that you've done either, but it doesn't end on like the ultimate fairy tale either. 
Exactly. It's part of your story. And what a story she has written for herself. Because I kind of hate movies like that, that end on complete fairy tales. Oh, my gosh. I guess I like them. But I, I like the idea of it being like, not everything went the way in the stars, but it it was very, like, you learn a lot from th- those experiences. Yeah, it's about the journey. Yeah. Right? And also uh, what she's done for, you know, equal pay and what she's done for, not alone, but she for justice, uh, you know, racial equality and everything. You know, doing things on the field, off the field, you know, standing up for social causes and, yeah. and everything like that. I yeah. I mean... I mean, she'll be missed a lot. She, uh, she will still play her OL Rain game. She isn't retired quite from that. We, we, we don't know if we will see her in the post uh, season because it's going to be close. Hopefully, we will see OL Rain in the playoffs. Hope so. Um, but the game overall, yeah. So that she wanted to score. She didn't score. The game ended up two 0 But Trinity Rodman in the 18th minute, she scored a banger. I mean, you, you talk about bangers. That was a banger. Beautiful, beautiful. And then um, Emily Sonnet, a saucy Sonnet, the yeah. Sonny. Oh, but Pino did get the assist on this. Oh yeah, with the corner. She yeah, she hit the she hit the corner, and then we had a Sonnet header. That was very cool. They had a moment too. They were hugging and playing, and Such very cute. But Sonnet, I mean, <laughs> love to see a Sonnet goal. So that game again ended up t- two nil, and Pino came out in the fifty fourth minute. She uh, I talked to Pi about it. Yeah, and at, at the very end of the game, we saw a lot of people crying, and they couldn't hold back their that, tears. That one, that, that one person in particular was right at, behind right, them. Yeah, yeah, behind when Pino was having her interview. Yeah, um, yeah, she was losing it. We were all her. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, also during uh, Megan's speech, um, Lindsay Horan was also very emotional. Oh yeah, she was losing it too. <laughs> and Pino's comment was cute, like Lindsay, gotta get together. <laughs> that was actually pretty cute. Um, but ended up two 0 Trin, Emily Sonnet, they both scored, and you know. Like I said, South Africa, South Africa was not a fully healthy team, but I thought they, you know, the the type of soccer they played was fun to watch, you know, and they looked like they had yeah. a good time. They looked like uh, will will be interesting to see who uh, got who becomes the permanent head coach. Um, but very cool to see Pino on her very last U.S. Women's National Team game. She's done so much, mm-hmm. but. This is what's going to happen. Whatever we kept, whatever was able to be salvaged from our last video, we'll just play that now. I'm actually not quite sure what we even talked about, but we'll play that. Okay, here we go to the next part. But she's also from Redding, California, which is so funny. Two I, people are from there in the whole world. Yes. I actually have family that's from Redding. Um, and oh, three people. I'm yeah. sorry, sorry. But it's funny. If you talk to most Californians, 95% of Californians have never been to Redding, have never been like above, you know, Mendocino County. No one's ever been up there. We're gonna have to do a poll on this because I'm not sure I believe you. Yes. No. It's very few people have been up there. She's from a part of the state that is very, very proud of her. And that doesn't have a lot of um, celebrities. Her and Ashley Angel Parker are like the two. From Reading. Um, but very, very cool that, you know, what she means. And it's such a long career, too. So it's like such a different national team. Yeah. It's like stop retiring people. Yeah. You know? But it's time, you know. I think she thinks it knows it's time. And I, I think everyone knows it's time. You know, it's perfect timing, actually. <laughs> but very cool. Thank you, Pino. Uh, we'll get to see her again, which is great. So it's almost like, a okay, get to see Pino one more time at, or, yeah. at the OL Rain game. Uh, games so those will be hot tickets but great game 2-0 again the uh, South Africa team uh, USA had two clean sheets which was great to see South Africa was not full strength but South Africa South Africa is a very strong team nonetheless you know very true very true great to see and the the team they look like they were having fun out there yeah look great um also those two games they have some friendlies against Colombia in October fun to watch those games see how the roster changes uh, cause it's going to change a little bit, I suspect. Also, um, this was a friendly for the United States, but there's a lot of very, very, very important football going on during this internationals break. The UEFA nations league is happening and that's going to be like the qualifier for the Olympics and for the euros that's happening. That's major, major stuff. Also the CONCACAF for the last spot of the Olympics, Jamaica versus Canada is happening. And that's also very important very important that the, the final the second game will be tomorrow in canada oh we watched the first one actually we did it was on uh, paramount plus we were able to watch the first yeah, that was the a- golazo um uh what is it cbs sports 
like lasso network or yeah. something like that where it's like live 24 7 yeah so that's the place to watch it we were able to watch that was a pretty good game my favorite ref uh <laughs> she was doing some wild <laughs> <laughs> there was a lot of funny moments in that game actually and the commentator for that game was like the best he was like commentating commentator. of the fans like oh she's canadian what is she doing <laughs> yeah every time the camera would pan over to the audience he would like say what they're doing oh they're leaving early and <laughs> great commentator because I, that's what i love about baseball commentary they talk a lot about the fans in the crowd random <laughs> they random need to moments. do they need to do more of that in soccer but very cool game we watched that it was two nil canada so i mean they're they're in the advantage going home they're ahead so i, I think they're gonna be able to clinch up that spot for the olympics which will be great for them considering their their bust of a world cup as well so mm. True. Because getting to the Olympics is tough. If you look at how many European teams are amazing teams, I believe only two more UEFA teams will be qualifying for the Olympics. Correct me if I'm wrong, but France has already qualified because they're a home team. You always qualify when you're the home team. And then you have two more spot spots, I believe. So there's a bunch of amazing European teams that are not going to qualify. There's wild. Sp Spain, Sweden, um, it's Team GB. It's not England for the Olympics. It's Team GB. It's Team the other, Germany. A, these, a lot of these teams are not going to qualify, which is crazy to think of. Netherlands. Yeah. There's going to be a lot of teams that won't qualify for Olympics. But like we always say in America, Amer the Olympics for Americans are huge. But I think in other countries, it's kind of like, yeah, they're great. But they're, you know, they're, they're not as big as the Euros or they're not as big as the World Cup. But in America, I think the Olympics are way bigger deal. Maybe because we don't have the Euros. What does everyone think? What did everyone think about the two games? I mean, are you guys sad to see Pino and Julie gone? Or are you yes. kind of excited about what's next? I'm kind of excited to see what's next, you know? I'm dwelling on the past, looking out a rainy window. Yeah. Where are you, Pino? Where are you, Julie? <laughs> oh, she's not going anywhere. We're going to see her ever. I feel like we're going to see her everywhere. I know. You know what I mean? But not on the pitch. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but it will be great. But I'm excited to see where this leads the U.S. Women's National Team. Um, Mia Fischel and M.A. Vignola. It was great to see them. You know, players like Sam Coffey came back in the mold fix. Tierna's back. Casey Kruger. You know, Mitch Purse. It's great to see. Um, it's just exciting. You know, it's from the, you know, you, it's from the lows to the low of the World Cup to just see where it goes from here. So it'll be great to see. Yeah, it's um, But it, it's sad to see the heroes and the legends move on, you know. Yes, the sheroes. Yeah. <laughs> Wasn't Very true. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Questions, comments down below. What did everyone think? Did everyone watch those games? And we will talk to everyone later. Have a great night. Bye. Bye.